grassiness really comes out. Kind of sucks you in a little bit. My name's Matthew Horky. For the last six years, I've been traveling around the world, tasting thousands of wines per year in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. But today, I'm going to show you some white wine grapes you should be checking out. White wine is really forgotten in today's wine world. A lot of people don't realize as early as the mid-1900s, for example, 50% of the production in Bordeaux was white wine. You go back hundreds of years, German Riesling was the most expensive wine in the world. Go back even farther, Tokai from Hungary was the most expensive wine in the world. Great winemakers will tell you that white wines are more difficult to make than good red wines. That's because you need temperature control, you need barrels, you need a certain amount of technology, you need to separate the skins from the juice so there's no color imparted in the wine. And then when this juice doesn't have skins, it's not protected from oxidation. So you gotta make sure the wine doesn't turn brown. It takes a lot of attention to detail. On top of that, I think white wines are way more food friendly and versatile in comparison to red wines. If I know I'm going to have a big wine night, I like to drink white throughout the night as opposed to red. It's just a little bit easier on my body. The world of white wine is so diverse. There are hundreds if not thousands of unique white wine grapes. Go to Italy, for example. It seems like there's a new white grape vinified into wine every single week. Eastern Europe, there's a lot of unique aromatic white grapes as well. That's why we're going to taste through eight different wines today. Of course, I can't cover all the white grapes in the world, but I'm going to cover some that you actually might come across in your wine shop. These are all American wines, but I'm going to recommend some worldly counterparts. First up, we have the Leco number 41 Chenin Blanc from Old Vines 2020. This is made in stainless steel. This should be just fresh and crispy. Chenin Blanc is a French grape, comes from the middle of Loire. To me, it's one of the world's most underrated and maybe greatest white wine grapes. Some of the most magical wines I've had are made from Chenin Blanc. This is from Washington State, where they cultivate a number of different grapes. But classically, if you're looking at the Loire, you're going to find appellations like Savagnier, Vouvray, Samour to have outstanding Chenin Blancs. There's also some great Chenin Blancs in South Africa. This is a very, very nice wine. On the nose, this is beautiful. This comes in at 19 bucks. Just think pineapple, yellow peach, maybe a little bit of white pepper, kind of a wet stone, a chalkiness. I mean, it's really complex for a white wine in this price range. I love the style of white wine. On the palate, it's more mineral tasting than it is fruity. Lots of acid, gets your mouth watering. Something that I want to have with a lot of shellfish, chicken dishes, maybe pork chops. If you ask most wine geeks what their favorite grape in the world is, they're probably going to say Riesling. <laughs> so that's what we have next. This is the Aroica Riesling 2020. This is a partnership from Chateau St. Michel in Washington State and Dr. Ernie Lucen in the Mosel in Germany. Chateau St. Michel is actually the largest producer of Riesling in the world by volume. Collaborations like this happen a lot in the wine world. Think about music. You put two rock stars together and create something nice. Riesling is a German grape. To me, when I think of great Rieslings in the world, I'm going to Germany, first of all, Austria. Then there's some beautiful ones in Australia, in Eden and Clare Valley, Washington State, and New York in the Finger Lakes. Although I've tasted good Rieslings all around the world, those are my kind of go-tos. Wine geeks love a Riesling because it's so complex, it can age well. It's really intense, got floral notes, fruitiness. I, let's see if this, this compares to what I think of Riesling. Yes, it does. It is explosive. Riesling is very aromatic. A lot of people associate Riesling with sweet wines. There are some cheap sweet Rieslings and there's some great sweet Rieslings, but a lot of Rieslings are actually dry, especially in Germany. Think white flower, apple blossom type flavors, lemon. Red apple type comes to mind. A lot of crushed rock. This wine comes in at 20 bucks. Nice value, at least on the nose for me already too. Oh, this is a dry wine. There's just a hint of sweetness in there, but overall it's dry. Maybe going to a little bit of off dry. Riesling sometimes needs a little bit of that sugar to combat the high acidity. It's really gonna get your mouth watering. I think why I'm so addicted to Riesling is I was addicted to lemonade as a kid. And that's what Riesling feels like on the palate. There's this nice interplay between acid, lemonness, sweetness. This is really good at 20 bucks. A lot of people actually 
drink Riesling with pork. That's what they do in Germany. You can have it with fish as well. A lot of times I like to have Rieslings by themselves. They're just so refreshing. There is a couple grapes I think I know really well professionally. I think Riesling is one of them. If I had to compare this to a region, I know it's a collaboration with a Mosel producer, which I can see, but to me, this actually reminds me a little bit more of a Fultz style Riesling, maybe a little bit bigger. Really nice wine. <laughs> Next up is another super underrated grape. This is Semillon. This is a French grape. This is the Lecol number 41 Semillon from Columbia Valley 2020. 82% Semillon, 18% Sauvignon Blanc. So this is essentially a white Bordeaux blend. Comes in at 18 bucks for a barrel fermented wine, which is a heck of a bargain. Semillon is a unique grape because I only think of two regions in the world. When I think of Semillon, I think of White Bordeaux, and I think of Hunter Valley in Australia, and that's basically it. A really unique grape, if you want to bring it to a party, 18 bucks, like for this wine, doesn't break the bank. Start some conversation. I usually think of Semillon as having this natural gas type of flavors, which I find attractive. More white pear, more linear. Let's see how it is. Doesn't have the natural gas yet that i guess comes with age but this does think of it as white white pear you know i don't know if you've had asian pears before they're pears that are kind of shaped like a big red apple a little bit of lemon this is more fruity not not all mineral this is pretty fruity white pineapple ah if you smell deep enough that's where i smell a little bit of the natural gas it starts to come out wow this is a lengthy wine i taste the wood a little bit but it's not super oaky or buttery like you think of a big chardonnay still a lot of acid still makes your mouth water but man, super complex, really long. I think all three of these wines I first tasted are a little bit more wine geek wines. There's a lot of acid here. You know, some people that are just getting into wine don't like white wine because they feel like it's quite sour. It's too acidic. But, you know, as you get into the wine world, you start to crave wines with more acidity. And that's why I love these wines. Next up, we have the Shehalem. This is Pinot Blanc. This is from Willamette Valley in Oregon, 2020. This comes in at 35 bucks, so it's a little pricier. I'm, I've got a lot of high expectations here. Pinot Blanc is actually from Burgundy. It's a mutation of Pinot Noir. It's Pinot Blanc, white Pinot. Pinot Noir, dark Pinot. Then you have Pinot Gris, Pinot Grigio, gray Pinot. It is very similar to Chardonnay. I've been tricked in a lot of blind tastings where I actually thought it was Chardonnay. They can make some pretty big oaky wines. Of course, also make wines that are a little bit more linear, have a little bit more acid. When I think of great Pinot Blanc regions, you think of Alsace in France. Another region I think is phenomenal is Trentino Alto Adige, where they call it Pinot Bianco. And then all through Germany, where they call it Weissbergender. This really smells like pineapple and grass. And maybe a little bit of yogurt too. Really interesting. It smells like it's a little bit bigger of a wine. So I'm assuming this will be more of a crowd pleaser. Grassiness really comes out. Kind of sucks you in a little bit. Wine is all about subtle flavors. When you say pineapple, it doesn't. it's not like a big fresh pineapple. These flavors are very subtle. You really get to search and look for them. That's why drinking more serious wine, it's not always just for hedonism, for pleasure. You have to search and look a little bit. I think that's why wine attracts a lot of people, especially a lot of people that are thinkers maybe more intellectual so to speak this is a wine that's just gonna be pure crowd pleaser it's just so full of pineapple white peach flavor so fruity long lasting i'm pretty lucky so far all these wines are pretty serious way more of a crowd pleaser than these three wines that have more high acid i know a lot of producers in germany say the same thing their weissbergenders sell out a lot faster sometimes than the rieslings because people want something that's a little softer a little easier to drink nice one the next three wines are grapes that I'm super passionate about. First up, we have the Coupe Marsan from the Los Olivos district in Santa Barbara County. 24 bucks for a barrel fermented white wine. I've seen this before, as low as 15 to 24 bucks for a barrel fermented white. That's a heck of a bargain. Marsan, it's a grape from the Rhone in the south of France. You don't see a lot of varietal wines labeled Marsan. This grape's usually in blends, although some of the most coveted white wines in the world are made entirely from Moussan. The Jean-Louis Chave Hermitage Blanc, the Chapoutier Le Miel White Hermitage, two wines I still haven't had yet on my wish list. I've had this wine in the past. I think it was one of the best bargains I tasted in California. Has a screw cap. Don't be scared of the screw cap. I certainly am not. Marsan is usually blended with the other grape we have coming, Roussan. Marsan brings a little bit of flavor, while Roussan brings a little bit more acidity body. Let's see how this is. I'm excited to taste this. <laughs> this is already developing some of those age notes. Mushroom, kind of a little bit of diesel fuel type flavors. 
Smells like an apricot marmalade, so to speak. Honey, completely different drinking experience than the previous four, and I just spilled some wine. No! Super complex. A lot of honey on the palate, complexity, get a hint of the wood on the palate, but overall, this is a lot of wine for 24 bucks. The kind of a thinking wine. I'm gonna drink this with a lot of creamy chicken, uh, a lot of casserole type dishes, slow baked dishes, anything that's been in the oven for a long time. This is good. Nice stuff. <laughs> All the wines have not disappointed me. Next two I have high expectations for. I'm hoping they don't disappoint me. This is the Tablas Creek from Paso Robles, California, 2019 Husan. Husan is another Rhone grape. A lot of people also compare really well-made examples to white burgundy or really well-made barrel fermented Chardonnays. I have to say one of the most memorable white wines I've had in recent years is the Chateau Bocasta Vie Vines Roussan. The Chateau de Bocasta is actually the sister property of Tablas Creek. This is a club members only type wine, I think. You have to be on their list. 40 bucks. Not cheap. Not cheap. This is also a barrel fermented wine. You know, last time I was in Chateauneuf de Pop, I learned that Roussan comes from the word Roux. Roussan comes from Roux, Roux, which means ginger, as in the color. And the wine turns a little bit orangey. It's as if it's oxidized, but actually it isn't. Let's see how this is. Wow, the first thing that comes out is dandelions. Dandelions and yellow flowers jump out at me. Lemon, lime, white peach type flavors. So the yellow flowers really come out quite a lot. And stone. Roan grapes, I think, are so unique because they taste completely different than other types of white wine, and that's why I think I love them so much. Probably the most serious wine we've had in the tasting so far. This is the type of white wine you're gonna give to most wine drinkers. They're gonna taste it. They're gonna say, that's 40 bucks? What the? This is the type of white wine that needs bottle age number one. It's not fruity, so it's hard for people that don't have a lot of experience in wine to drink. It's more mineral, more stony, more austere, as we like to say in the wine world. The fruit's not really expressive, but it's a looking wine. You gotta think, you gotta look in the glass. And actually, there's quite a lot going on. It's the most complex so far. Really good wine, but you gotta know the crowd when you have these types of wines, and it needs a little bit of time. Next up is we have a blend that a lot of you should be able to find. This is the Tablas Creek Espirit Blanc de Tablas from Paso Robos Tablas Creek. This is 63% Roussan, 20% Grenache Blanc, 14% Picpoul Blanc, and 3% Picardin. All grapes from the south of France. This is supposed to be like a Chateauneuf de Pop white type of blend. Chateauneuf de Pop whites are some of the most unique wines in the world. I've got some articles. I did a blind tasting video recently. I'll put that in the description below. I think besides the south of France, Spain as well, California then is my next favorite place for white Rhone grapes. There's some good ones in Australia too. This smells a lot more friendlier than the Roussan. Really fruity up front. Lemon, white peach, white apple, white pepper even, stone. 50 bucks, a little bit more of a baller wine, but it smells like an expensive white wine. Wine along with tea are molecularly the most complex beverages in the world. There's been a study that shows there's a thousand volatile compounds in wine. That's why it's difficult. What I get in the nose can be completely different than what you get because everybody has a different palate, number one, pick up different things, different memories. They associate wines with different flavors. Mmm, super complex. This wine has the longest finish out of all of these wines. And that's what you get from blending not only red grapes, but white grapes as well. You add a little bit of different complexities, add some acid here, some flavor here. It's kind of like cooking. Really good wine. I know you, it's, it's not cheap. You got to be willing to spend. But uh, if you're looking for something a little bit more special, a bit more unique, this is really nice. I mean, yeah, I think a lot of California Chardonnays get into the 50, 60, even more range. And I don't think... I've tasted a lot that don't bring as much excitement as this wine does. Gosh, all the wine so far is good. Okay, and at the end of the day, you don't want to try white wine grapes? Why not try a white wine made from red grapes? This is the Left Coast Estate White Pinot Noir from Willamette Valley in Oregon, 2020. Yes, they make white wines out of red grapes. The most common is Pinot Grigio, actually. Grigio is a gray, pinkish, reddish sometimes skin. They make white wine out of it because they separate the skin from the juice. Pinot Noir as well. Champagne, white champagne, a lot of times is made from red grapes because there are more red grapes planted in champagne than there are white. Pinot Noir needs no introduction from Burgundy in France, one of the world's greatest and most coveted wine grapes. I have to say I've tasted a lot of Blanc de Noirs, white wine from red grapes. 
And usually I don't like them too much. I had a Merlot once I thought was terrible from Switzerland. Pinot Noir is the only one I think that's consistently pretty good. And this does smell good. This has a lot of yogurt notes. Yogurt, lemon, maybe even a subtle strawberry type of flavor. Wow, this is 24 bucks, quite complex. Good Blanc de Noirs like this one have that subtle lemon plus strawberry type of flavor. Super friendly, nice crowd pleaser, a uh, little bit of complexity, something you wanna bring to a party, I think it's gonna turn a lot of eyeballs. A nice wine as well. Okay, I think the most friendly in terms of bringing to a crowd, diversity of wine drinkers is the Pinot Blanc and the Left Coast White Pinot Noir from Oregon. Those are crowd pleasers, gonna be easy for a lot to drink. Me personally, more geeky wines. I love the Le Col Semillon and the Riesling from Eroica, Chateau Saint Michel, and Dr. Lucen. Acid driven, really gonna make your mouth water. The most complex wine was probably the Tablas Creek, a Spirit Blanc de Tablas, and maybe the best wine for me out of the tasting. But the wine that I probably wanna drink tonight, I think it's ready, is the Marsan from Coupe. Already has some bottle age. I don't think you wanna age it anymore. I'm ready to drink it now. Let me know, do you have any unique white wine grapes that you like to drink? Drop it in the comments below, and I'll see you soon.